Hello there. There's a new sport in town, and it's highly illegal, so I could never condone it, could I? The Blade Runners are in town, well, in the Greater London area anyway, and they have vowed to remove all the ULES cameras, whatever it takes. All illegal criminal damage, of course. So it's very naughty and they should stop. But when there's no democratic route to get the ULES expansion stopped and evidence of fiddled, dodgy dossier reports into how effective the new ULES would be and even an ignored consultation, then maybe they have a point. And former Tory leader and MP for Chingford and Woodford Green in North East London, Sir Ian Duncan Smith, certainly backs the Blade Runners. Talking to the Mail, he said, A lot of people in my constituency have been cementing up the cameras or putting plastic bags over them. I am happy for them to do it because they are facing an imposition that no one wants and they have been lied to about it. He'll have to be careful. He might have his bank account pulled. And Ian Duncan Smith went on to say, The actions you are seeing show how angry people are at what is being imposed on them. Sadiq Khan has gerrymandered all the information. People have had enough. And images and videos are bound across the web of masked figures snipping ULES camera wires, spray painting their lenses, toppling the posts the cameras are mounted on, and even spraying substances into the circuitry to disable them. Many cameras are removed and kept as souvenirs. Now, the campaign director of the Blade Runners, a Captain Gatso, told Talk TV's Julia Hartley Brewer that he considered it to be a form of unpaid voluntary work and that when you are under constant attack from your own government, then you have to take offensive, defensive action, he said. And one Blade Runner met with the Mail Online and said he had removed 34 cameras himself, but that others, like him, had removed hundreds of them. And there are over a hundred fellow Blade Runners, he said, using the same tools to dismantle them as the installers used to put them in. Everything we are doing is for our own freedoms, he said. It's the tip of the iceberg. We do not live in a democracy. We will fight with everything we have for our freedoms. And he posed for photos, face blurred out, holding some of his prizes. And another Blade Runner from another team said that whatever the authorities do, the cameras will keep coming down. Now, according to Sadiq Khan and Transport for London, the police are on the case and take this matter very seriously. But the Mail reports that... However... When approached by Mail Online, the Met Police said there was no trace they had ever investigated ULES cameras being damaged or stolen. But the Telegraph is saying the Met had recorded 288 such crimes, with two arrests so far and only one charged and bailed to appear in court in 2024. Strange. Very strange. Anyway... Despite all this opposition to the ULES expansion, Sadiq Khan has brought it online. But it has caused a bit of a rift within his own Labour Party. With Justin Madders, the Shadow Minister for Employment Rights, telling LBC that I think he probably needs to be listening to some of the callers you've been having on and how it's affecting them and think about whether this is really the right time to be going ahead with it. Well, Khan did go ahead with it. And as Nigel Farage said, people are now very angry. And I think Khan should have started with the underground first. It's fetid down there. How can it be legal to make children use it? Now, if you wonder why you feel poorer every day, then watch on. Numbers might not be something you expect to make you angry, but I bet these do. I've taken a look at some of the finance figures for the UK over the last 20 years and I was both angry and dismayed. Here we go. 
Over the last 20 years, the population of the UK has increased by 14%, some 8.5 million people. Our GDP has increased by 37%. Inflation has reduced your buying power by 75% instead of the 49% had the Bank of England controlled inflation properly. But stand by for this one. The UK Treasury tax take is now 2.45 times the size it was in 2003. The tax take has increased by 144.5%. Now, when taking both inflation and the population increase into account, based on 2003 figures, it should be about 565 billion quid by now. But the tax take now stands at some 787 billion quid. That's 222 billion a year higher. 39% higher, in fact. Then there's the matter of tax as a ratio of our national GDP. In the early 2000s, the tax take was about 19% of GDP. Now it's in the region of 30%. It's half again as much as it was. And then we get to the national debt. That is five times the size it was 20 years ago. All those politicians lining up and claiming that by borrowing when the interest rates were low would be a good thing. So they borrowed and borrowed and borrowed again. Forgetting that when interest rates rise and we have to roll the government bonds over, the interest paid on those bonds would also increase, so pushing up the nation's borrowing costs. So the tax take has increased far more than GDP has, and GDP has not even increased in line with inflation. That means that our GDP is worth less today, in real terms, than it was 20 years ago with a debt-to-GDP ratio hovering about the 100% mark. We have a shrinking economy in real terms. And this is not a recent phenomena. No, this all started at least back in 2005 under Tony Blair and Gordon Brown. By the time they left office in 2010, the tax-to-GDP ratio had increased from about 19% to 22% and the tax take was about £28 billion more than it might have been due to population increase and inflation. But this, of course, was the era of credit crunches, when we ended up pumping billions into the banking system to keep the bankers all nice and safe. And it hasn't stopped since. With the health emergency and the second Russian invasion of Ukraine exacerbating the situation in more recent years. So this developed well before the Brexit referendum and before we officially left the bloc. But low interest rates, extra borrowing and higher tax takes as well as heavy regulation have all been taking their toll. Death by a thousand cuts. The UK economy is being boiled slowly, like the frog, into insolvency. And the only plan any of them has is for the government to borrow more, tax more and spend more. All for the sake of investment. But look around you. What have they been investing in? And now we hear from the experts that we have a shrinking money supply with worries about a pending recession. Right now the UK needs basics – not expensive, white elephant, grand schemes, wokeness and virtue signalling. 